Hey everyone, it's Matt the Rat back with another episode of Enter the Gungeon. Now, I know it's been a while since the last episode, and let me explain why. So, I started recording a bunch of footage of myself doing runs through the game, trying to basically unlock a bunch of the smaller stuff in the game, unlocking items and weapons and stuff. And it was very grindy, and a lot of it involved me just doing runs over and over and over again, simply to get credits or to try and find the thing I was looking for. And I realized a lot of it was honestly kind of boring. And I don't want you guys to have a boring video to watch. I want it to be entertaining. And so with that in mind, I ended up stop recording them and I didn't post the footage I had. And I wanted to wait until I got certain things and did specific goals that I had in mind. And I kept doing the grinding thing off camera. Now for this episode... What happened was, I was in the middle of just a normal run, just working towards some stuff, and I reached the opportunity where I felt I couldn't pass it up. And that opportunity was to fight an, a harder version of the High Dragon boss called the Advanced Dragon. And so, like I said, I had a great run going, I had great items and weapons, and I felt like I couldn't pass it up. So I fired up OBS and I started recording. However... It was late at night, and my walls are thin, and I didn't want to wake up anybody in my house, so I couldn't record any audio. Instead, I recorded some commentary after the fact, and so, you know, cut me some slack. I'm not used to doing that, of course. I'm used to doing live commentary um, as best as I can, so this will be a little bit different, but I still think it should be a good video. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Enjoy. So as you can see, I made it to the resourceful rat's lair. Hadn't killed the rat, but I did make away with two keys, which is what I needed. The reason I had so much confidence in this run was the loadout I had. I had the gold amulet for blank damage up. I had made away with three of the master rounds. Easy reload bullets. Reloading on rolling. Chaos amulet. Blanks having a chance to poison freeze and ignite enemies. The gondromeda strain, reducing enemy health. The hazmat suit, making me immune to fire, poison, and electricity. Broccoli, which increases both my damage and attack speed. The Shelton key, opening any lock, never being consumed, allowing me to get a lot of the items and weapons that I have. The ammo belt, increasing my ammo capacity, of course. Wolf. The cat bullet king throne, shooting bullets whenever I roll and giving me flight. Liquid Valkyrie, slowing enemy pro projectiles. The ballot. Increasing my coolness, heart purse increasing my total hearts by one, and fat bullets making my bullets larger and stronger. Unity was made stronger because I had many guns as you can see. I had the pitchfork, buzzkill, heroin, zilla shotgun, vulcan cannon which synergized with the ammo belt, polaris which gets stronger after so many kills and levels up, dueling laser which has infinite ammo but recharges like an item and shoots a single powerful laser. The Hyper Light Blaster, which has a small ammo capacity, but doesn't use any ammo as long as you successfully hit an enemy. The Mega Hand, which I had two synergies with, with both the Mega Dowser and the Buzzkill. Wind Up Gun, Triple Crossbow, Gamma Ray, and the Plague Pistol. Several of these guns I simply bought because I had the money to do so, and doing it made, made my weapon stronger through Unity. So I needed to use a blank and unlock these two doors. This is a serpent that needs to be fed four items. And then he will accompany you. I needed to do this so that I could fight the advanced dragon boss. Which is something I alluded to in a previous episode. You can feed him anything, including the corpse of the resourceful rat, oddly enough, as long if you kill him. I gave him my junk, of course, and realized my Guan stones would disappear as soon as I got hit, so figured I should get rid of them. Took me a minute to decide what else I wanted to give to him, but I eventually settled on the easy reload bullets. So now he's following me. He doesn't attack enemies or anything, he just flies around, but we need him for the advanced dragon boss fight. So now I just needed to get there, which I was very confident I'd be able to do, as I'd done it many times before at this point. Here you can see the power of the dueling laser. Pretty good, right? 
And I decided I should level up the Polaris. It gets stronger after so many kills up to level 3, but it goes back a level every time you get hurt. It is of course a reference to Cave Story, and is a very cool weapon, but here I decided to upgrade it. Every chest I found was great because I was able to open all of them due to having the Shelton Key. Here the Polaris reaches level 2, in which it now fires two parallel projectiles, which can be hard to see because of the fatter bullets, but trust me, they're there. And here it reached level 3, fighting off this room of spent. I kept having very good luck in this run. I came across the Adventurer, which meant I knew I could get another free item, essentially, as long as I mapped out the area. Here I got the Flare Gun, which is terrible, but... Increased my damage of my other guns through unity even further. Since I hadn't used it much before, here I decided to try testing out the plague pistol. I did so by using the lament configurum, which I've been using because you need to use it 20 times in order to unlock an item. I don't really care to use it too much on its own in a normal run, but I was intentionally using it frequently in order to get the item. Here you can see the hyperlight blaster refunding its ammo for every shot. Here I got the stinger, and I completed the map. He rewarded me with the hegemony rifle, increasing my damage further again because of unity, and it also had synergy with the ammo belt, giving me hegemony special forces in which it shoots a beam and is far more accurate than before. Now it's time to take on the boss. The Cat Bullet King Throne was really helpful here because I could just sit in his fire, floating above it, and it wouldn't hurt me. Although it wouldn't have hurt me anyways because of the hazmat suit. As you can see, I killed him extremely fast. Um, and perfectly, flawlessly, didn't take a single hit of damage. Giving myself another master round. Things were looking really, really good at this point. I have plenty of money, so let's go ahead and buy the sticky crossbow. And look, another synergy. This makes it shoot three shots instead of just one, all of which explode upon reloading the gun. If you don't know, using the Lament Configurum has a chance to drop a weapon. However, the weapon will always be cursed if you pick it up. The Rubidine Mark II is a good weapon, but I had other very good weapons and I didn't want to increase my curse any, so I didn't grab it. Well, I feel sorry for this poor bastard. Son of a bitch. The Rubidine prototype. If I had picked up the Rubidine Mark II before, I could have made Rubinstein's monster by buying both of them. Oh well. Too late now. I decided to buy the mutation since I had just unlocked it. I finally unlocked the bloody 9mm, again rewarded for using the Lament Configurum 20 times. I was very relieved because it meant I didn't have to intentionally use it anymore. Getting a Cold 45, another weapon I had just recently unlocked. Now it's time to face the dragon. I was pretty confident that I could beat him though. For the first phase of the fight, the serpent joins the dragon by his side and occasionally shoots projectiles at you. I decided to use the Vulcan Cannon because, well, I mean, look. The first part of the fight was not going to be a problem. A couple projectiles won't stop me from at least getting to his next phase.
Here's where the fight gets interesting. After the first time you make it through this wave, he seizes the serpent and absorbs it. Turning himself into a much stronger version. And unfortunately, fully refilling his health. Again, I wasn't too worried though because I still had plenty of health. I had lost too much, but I was still doing okay. I didn't even know how he attacked, but I knew that my DPS would be so high because of all the items I had. Especially with the Vulcan Cannon here. A Rain of Rockets is actually probably his easiest attack. When he puts these symbols on the ground, you need to stand outside of them to be able to shoot. It took me a second to figure out, but eventually I got it. Using the buzzkill, I was able to finish him off. With quite a spectacular death animation, I might add. And that's it. The advanced dragon unlocking the holy grail. Like I said, this was an opportunity that I knew I couldn't pass up because of all the items I had. And I think you can understand why after seeing how much damage I did. And for good measure, I went and killed my past. Doing so with a character's alternate costume unlocks an alternate skin for their starting weapon. This was a crazy run, and it went well. And I saved the day. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's, again, it's different than what I have done normally, but uh, I still did my best and I thought, hope that it will still make a pretty enjoyable experience to watch. So... I'm going to keep working on grinding a little bit and getting more unlocks done because I want to unlock everything in the game, but a lot of it is pretty boring for you, like I said. So, next episode, what I think I'm going to be doing is attempting challenge mode again, and that's going to be my focus, but um, I will have unlocked most, if not everything else that I can. So, we'll work on challenge mode in the next episode and then after that, our goal will be to finish off with our extra characters and everything. And with that being said, that's going to do it for this episode, of course. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment. Uh, please subscribe, grow my channel some. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Later.